Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Wow, so happy to be back. I'm Danielle Schneider. And I'm Casey Wilson. And this is Bitch Sesh, a Real Housewives breakdown show. And we have a lot to report on this week. So, so much. much to pack in this week. Woo, Danielle. But first off, I'd like to I just like issue a retraction, yeah, I guess. I think you'd better. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. It's it's tough, but last week I said something that you caused really fucked up. <laughs> it caused a lot of controversy on Twitter and on Instagram. Mm. People yelling at me with exclamation points. The World Wide Web was a flame. It was, and I am only to blame myself. You didn't even say you didn't say, it, Casey. Oh, I don't want to touch this with a ten foot pole. <laughs> no, I. It's only me, and that I said that Jill Zarin was the only Jew on. Real Housewives on on the whole thing and that she's gone and that there weren't any more. And wow, did the internet come Explode. And, and get me. And Twitter, people were yelling at me like, Mauricio's Jewish and Kyle converted for him. And yeah. they told me that Bethany is Jewish because her mother wasn't, but her father was. And they reminded was. us when Heather Dubrow made latkes. Yes, but she, has, she makes so much of Christmas. I'm sorry, on Instagram, that is hard to tell that she's Jewish. Christmas is happening forever. And let's not forget time. Katie on Potomac. I know. Whose and, mother did, was, did an Orthodox conversion. And then we got to see her do like a naming ceremony. I mean, I I'm full Jew, yes, and I've better never stand corrected, <laughs> I know, so I Stand corrected. Stand I, and, in your shame. And then also, I think someone said, "Was Lynn Jewish?" There was other. Someone else might have been, but but I'd like to apologize and issue a retraction. And thank you for correcting me, everyone. I stand corrected. This Jew stands corrected. And you feel very badly. Yes, I'm going to go to church and <laughs> repent. Is oh, that what you people do? Interesting. Oh my gosh. So much this week. First, mm-hmm. I want to go ahead and thank uh, a friend of the show, a listener mm-hmm. who is none other than Henry Goldblatt, the editor in chief of Entertainment Weekly. Yes. Which is my go-to paper. Oh, well, it's a magazine. Yeah, well, I mean, but you know, it's yeah. my paper of record. Sure. It's my New York Times. It's yeah. my, so it's my yes, favorite it's, flyer. It's, <laughs> exactly. So I, it's and the only thing I read in a week. He sent Danielle and I the very article that I was horribly trying to quote last week concerning one Kendra, you know, of Kendra on top mm-hmm. and Hank Basket. Of <laughs> What's Kendra's last name? Kendra on top. <laughs> Anyway. I, Williamson Wilkinson Wilkinson she was a girl next door before she became Miss Basket and I love they used to advertise her show as Kendra the girl with the laugh oh was like no. her laugh was just <laughs> fairly normal it was a little annoying but they're like you can't stop watching the girl with that laugh what channel was it on I mean I know entertain e, e was the girl next door but then did she like downgrade to like we or something with the yeah. Ken show and then when Hank couldn't stay on a basketball team it just kept trickling down yeah now to- she's on like FYI or something <laughs> like she's on like <laughs> she's a- on like T-Mobile yeah <laughs> anyway so Hank and Kendra did a tell all for People Magazine, and this article came out. He really went back yeah, into I the feel like archives, he like went to, into microfiche, and like got it out. And this article came from People Magazine, so I really want to thank Henry for going to a rival thank, publication. Yes, thank you, Henry. We really appreciate this. This gem came out July thirteenth, two thousand fifteen, and I would just like to read one paragraph Please because do. it's the best paragraph of journalism I have ever <laughs> read in my life. Okay. This was the sit down tell all that and what Hank said occurred when he was accused of cheating on Kendra with a transvestite. Okay. Last April, Hank says, I put myself in a bad situation. Leaving a grocery store basket says he encountered two people smoking marijuana. He asked to buy some and one person gave him a phone number. When Basket called, he was provided a location. He showed up at the home and used the restroom. And when he emerged, quote, I saw something I thought I would never see in my life, he said, visibly shaking at the memory. He says two transgender women, one of whom had greeted him at the door, were, quote, making out, one of them nude. As Basket stood, he said, this person approached him and began fondling him through his basketball shorts. I froze, he said, as Wilkinson offers a comforting pat on the back. It was like a bank robbery. You never know when you'll freeze. Finally, I snapped and I ran. Later, a tabloid report emerged emerged in which an insider has claimed to have knowledge of the situation alleged that Basket had sought out the woman for a sexual encounter. The source also provided additional details of the supposed tryst. In the months following the media frenzy, Basket seemed to struggle to give an accounting of his actions. And now he explains tearfully, it's hard to defend yourself when people are making up lies. Wow. (laughs) When he says fondling him through his basketball shorts, I froze. It was like a bank robbery. You never know when you'll freeze. I mean, how Kendra, 
can <laughs> believe any. I mean, I don't know. You don't get in that situation. Well, you it don't is, know when you'll freeze. You and that's true. I guess so. If a car is coming at you, but that's not a car. That's a person. But and if someone was fondling me through my basketball shorts, I think <laughs> I would freeze. I think you wouldn't be wearing basketball shorts. <laughs> One. <laughs> and I I think you would freeze for a second and then be like, look, I just came here to buy weed, which I shouldn't have done because there are now places you can actually do that. I love why that he's using the freezes like why he allowed it to occur. <laughs> it's just so amazing. I think it, you would run away as fast as possible if you didn't want something to happen. And also like to go to a stranger's house to buy marijuana. I don't believe that. I don't. And when he comes out of the bathroom, he saw a sight he never thought he'd see in his whole life. <laughs> I so feel like good. Kendra has, and at some point does she say like, I got to believe him when I'm, what am I supposed to yeah, do? Yeah, Kendra is quoted as saying simply, and I trust that we're headed to forever together. Oh, I think she's just saying like, look, this isn't true, but I'm t- saying, you know, it's like, I'm saying this for the people to just get everybody guys, off my back because she cannot believe with this. this laugh. This is the best I can, <laughs> this is the best I can do. Okay, moving on. Well, thank Danielle you and I, Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Henry. Danielle and I purchased two new products from mm. the Housewives lines. We sure did. And one came for free. The third came for free, just out of generosity from <laughs> Gretchen Christine Butte. <laughs> <laughs> this is Gretchen Rossi of Real Housewives of Orange County fame, who's no longer with us as R.I.P. a Housewife. I mean, and I'm missing not- her and Slade and their helicopter romance. When he pro- Wait, did she propose? Am I re- getting this right? I get- those two, who knows who proposed? I feel like it happened off camera and then they're like, let's do it for the camera big time. But it was like so weird on the that rooftop. and It was so strange. And Slade, fa- who fancies himself the Stand uh, up Desi comedian. Arnaz to her Lucy. <laughs> ball and I feel like they were on another show like a, a relationship rehab show they're always trying to get their stuff out there yeah, for sure. I feel like they've been been around but she still has Gretchen Christie to her credit UK going. and now it's making me think we should try Lynn's bracelet line oh remember yeah, Lynn on her um, Lynn yeah the one I just thought was it, Jewish weren't they in Bar- Barney's at some point or she no. said they were possibly getting her bracelet I feel bracelets? like she went to Barney's and was like you want to see my bracelets <laughs> I cannot believe. Like, and then her red faced husband that they're always like walking by the park. Like they're no longer their together. Foreclosures. They're oh. no longer. Oh, they couldn't last through that. I that know. that was a mess. That was a, that was actually a really sad storyline. Okay, so here we have Gretchen. Uh, Gretchen, Christi, Gretchen. I can't even make heads or tails. This name, Gretchen Christine. It's almost a like Kyle. It's Kyle I mean, too. So many first names. Girls, give us a last name. And, Gre- and Gretchen Christine. And then to throw the Butte. I know, as if that's a real spelling or like that makes it classic by pronouncing well, it in some sort of French Our guest way. who we're going to bring out in a second pointed out the earrings that are chandelier style diamonds and that, I put that in quotes are simply broken. Yeah, they retail at $26 but we will be sending them back because they're broken. They came. They came broken. Broken. And they're such a classic housewife chandelier teardrop fake diamond earring. Yeah, like it's they're very forever 21. Like you'd see them there and be like too much forever 21. I'm spending 24 on yeah, these. Yeah, and they would kind of rust your earlobes. Oh yeah, you would get an infection but immediately. this gem Danielle, that I hold in my hands is a lip plumper called Titillate. Okay. Retailing for $22. That's so much money. Okay, I'm going to give her a whirl. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Are you? Are we okay? With she the- smells kind of fruity. Yeah? And do you feel a tingling from the no, plump? No, it's dry. I can't get enough on the brush. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm giving her a little pump. <laughs> Talk amongst yourself, Danielle. It's looking pretty so far. I'm going to tell our audience it's almost like kind of a glittery peachy purple. Not purple. Per, peachy pink. Is there a bronze in it or no? Yeah, it does have a, but it looks good on you. It's good Ooh. with your coloring. But it also, there's not a lot of light in the nook, so I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> in the, uh, sitting in front of this pear wallpaper. <laughs> but it's looking good on you. How does it feel? Hmm. It, it feels dry. You're putting it, it together. Dry. It feels dry. I want to see it on you, Danielle. I don't as have you rub your lips. <laughs> Thank you for that. You haven't been to a transvestite <laughs> prostitute and froze recently. No, you never know when. Okay. You never know when you'll freeze. Okay. Oh, it is dry. <laughs> it's hard it's to quite get across dry. my lip. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. It's the wand is. It's sticky. I just can't believe it. Oh, okay, Danielle, <laughs> and with love. It's, it's giving you a very Jersey look. It's a very frosty look. Did I look. not come to the table with that? Let me just ask No, you, you didn't. It's a very frosty look. It now, looks good on you. It, it's better on you than it is on me. You know when you lick your lips and you're wearing lipstick, it tastes like candy and just all these chemicals, mm-hmm. but that could be I'm on a low-calorie diet. I'm trying to lose weight from the baby, and literally what I just had for my snack was mm-hmm. airborne gummies. <laughs> 
right? So this does have an airborne gummy type of Yeah, that's taste. my treat at the end of a day is my gummy prenatals. <laughs> oh, God. I know. That's Things have gotten so sad. Ever uttered. I know. Ooh, I'm going to have my dessert, a gummy prenatal. I was like, you know what? I'm going to treat myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's those dove chocolate. I hope you took them out of the fridge. Oh, well, I have my doves after this. Well, yeah, it's a dark chocolate. Goes it's a dark chocolate. It's healthy for you. I'm not a monster. There All is right. a sting. E- oh, I'm, I'm feeling like a, a little sting from the lip stuff, which is the plumping, I assume. And then we were given a pair of eyelashes for free. Are they individuals or did, oh god? This comes no. with every purchase with Chris, Gretchen Christine Bute is lashes. They say Gretchen Christine false eyelashes are the dramatic difference. Are the dramatic difference? These reusable lashes will instantly give you a stunning and beautiful look. For a how to wear, please visit. Oh, I don't know. I guess <laughs> it's a video. It's a YouTube link. Oh, those made are made in Indonesia. Oh, of course they are. And these this ladies is number four fifteen black. These don't like ladies like to make in the USA. Well, that is not. Gretchen is such a model of subtlety that <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh wow! All right. Well, that's wow. our next. Uh, my lips are definitely feeling like a cake and dry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, Thank for doing you. that with us. I You never know when you'll freeze. Those, those gummies. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> Someone has sex with you're trying to have sex with you. You're like, no, 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 Oh, gosh. Okay. Let's just move swiftly along to our guest. Mm-hmm. Our guest is a very, very special friend of mine. She's actually my sister in law. Mm-hmm. And I call her my sister. We are the Melissa Gorga, Teresa Judice <laughs> slash Jacqueline which, Larita and Caroline Mann. Who is you? Wait, oh, I would say which one is who, which one of you is Jackie or which one of you is Teresa? Which one of you is Melissa? I feel like you're Melissa. <laughs> really? Well, Melissa's like the pretty yeah, one. Yeah, she's terrible. that's a compliment. She's pretty but terrible. I don't think she's terrible. I don't think she's terrible. I mean, really? I, uh, let's speak in housewives terms. Okay. Like you know See, what I mean? In housewives like, terms, Melissa is like got a it dream together. Come true, right. yeah. Right. Like in the world, yes, Melissa isn't great. But in Housewives world, she's a, a gem. She's Mother Teresa. <laughs> well, my sister-in-law is an avid watcher of all things television. Avid. She's got amazing taste for mm-hmm. the types of shows I like. For instance, she probably got me into Kendra and Hank's world. <laughs> and later she's going to share with us her must list. And I think she should be writing for The New Yorker as a yes. critic. <laughs> yes, she really does. She has phenomenal taste. Yes, and her name, please welcome... Shira Casp Weiss. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to have you Thank here. Thank you for As having me. Can I, I try these earrings on? Please. At your own risk. Can I say you guys? At your own risk. Do you have a tetanus? Li- too. My lips are numb. <laughs> Mine too. They're dry and cakey. And numb. <laughs> I can't speak well, guys. This is... <laughs> Something's, <laughs> Something's happening. Something's not right. These housewives products do not so well. My ho- my eye blew up the other day. I know. And yesterday, Danielle and I t- tried some other things for a strange spot that we filmed, which was a joy uh-huh. on Entertainment Tonight. Yes. And we tried uh, so many sugary housewives wines, the Fabellinis of the world. And uh-huh. I-, I woke up with a hangover. <sighs> I cannot even describe to Who's you. Who's this Fabellini? Teresa. Teresa. Judice. 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 That's a controversial last name because it started Judice and then it was Judice and it went all over I the place. I know. Place. And I'll just quickly put in a plug for Colette, uh, Heather Dubrow's Champenois. Delicious. I think Delish. I'll back off the alcohol. I feel like Bethany has, Bethany did the alcohol. She did it well. She didn't do champagne. She, she didn't, didn't do champagne. champagne. There's no skinny champagne? I don't think. I don't believe there so. Must be. I don't think so. No. Colette corner of the market, guys. My lips are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> These earrings have already infected. I mean, I can already feel. Them. Yeah, you have like a green head. gray. Yes, I already have the green <laughs> gray circle. I have to take them out already. That we all have. Well, when you have such nice earrings. Don't mistake those and take those home and keep your <laughs> other nice diamonds here. Them. Let's take a quick break. We are back. Okay, what we need to discuss is a field trip, really, that the three of us, Shira mm-hmm. and Danielle and I took on Friday yes, with sure our did. other friend, Danielle. No, with oh, Diana, <laughs> who was our guest last week on the podcast. Deanna Rayfield mm-hmm. to Sir. Guys, we it was hard to get a reservation. Casey couldn't even get one. I had an assistant call. I had <laughs> my husband's assistant call and pretend to be a PR person. It's so sad. <laughs> so and sad. I think it says more about me <laughs> that we couldn't get a reservation, but they were like, you can come at six or you don't come at all. I was like pretty shocked. Well, we we went at we went at six thirty. 
Um, and the crowd, it was bus. I was the first one there and it was bustling. And I went in to just see if I could see a person there that we knew, not a recognizable face in the crowd, guys. What did the crowd look like to you? So many, since we've been, so many people have asked, what does the crowd look like? It Such a hard there, question. I mean, there was, there was moms, right? There a was lot old, of a moms. lot of older moms. A lot of aunts. A ton of tourists. There was a group of guys by the bar with, with, Girls that were working. And right? then there was uh-huh. gay guys and straight guys. Gay, uh-huh. right. There was people there, ironically. There were people there genuinely <laughs> there for real. I didn't. There was, was no lot. through was line. The, yeah, no there was. Line. It was so random. And and the waitress literally said to us, like, so are you guys visiting from out of town? And we were like, no. And she's like, so is it like someone's birthday? And we said, mm. no. She said, do you from Los Angeles? What? Or, yes. <laughs> she was she so was confused stunned. as to why. Someone would choose this place that lived in this town and knew of other restaurants in this town. She looked at us like, you're kidding. Wait, what? (laughs) She was perplexed. And we were like, no, we're just here on on our own volition. (laughs) No one, we we're here for us. Now the appetizers I thought were okay. Define okay. Well, Kira, why don't you tell us what you spent the first part of the meal doing? (laughs) <laughs> I spent the first part of the meal searching for the A, B, or C letter in the window. The health I did code. Not, I just like I've never and I've truly never walked into a restaurant and and not and really it. no, just not even look for it. Usually, I you know there's, there's like a, you know you walk into a restaurant, there's like an understanding that we're at least at a B. And yeah, I this felt, was shaky C this at best. Was dark. Like I felt like I really was. Genuinely, I mean, my brother gets me super worried about. The, he always tells me he likes to check the letters, right? Yeah. And I, yeah, I felt like we did. <laughs> <laughs> I just like pushed the mic and just your lips. My face. I'm not close enough. She can't okay. feel it on her lips, but she has special and Christine Butte <laughs> lips on. And and it, you were right because the restaurant was very dark. It was very dark. They were hiding to the point something. where stuff was hiding. Yeah. I pointed out there was some the, everything, all the silverware and the. Everything was dirty. And, and Casey glasses, pointed out the name. The name yes, written, the name. it was like on the wall and kind of like a plaque, like an acrostic poem <laughs> for what SIR stands for. And I never knew SIR stands for, not a joke, sexy, unique restaurant. <laughs> it was like, what? <laughs> sexy, unique uh, restaurant? Like, like they just <laughs> threw it on there at the end. Such a weird thing to, to name a restaurant. It was strange. And then the entrees. Ooh. Oh, wait. I would like to also talk about the appetizer real quick because I got Stassi's famous got cheese, got balls. cheese balls. That's right. And they were good. I thought they were decent, but they were the size of an eraser head. Like mm-hmm. the smallest appetizer. And then like carrots shavings and sh- and and cucumber shavings like strewn about to make it look like more of a, a thing. They were so tiny. They were so tiny. I was like, anyone want to split one? We didn't want to take well, what little you had. <laughs> they were terrible. I, I feel like we thought they were good <laughs> until we tried the entrees and then, I mean, we thought they were bad. Then once you realize how bad yeah. the entrees were, suddenly the goat falls. Yes, then you're like, like the looking at the, the restaurant through the lens of the entree. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and eat one good. No, that entree... Casey and I split a chicken paillard. We know a lemon. T- <laughs> <laughs> Inexplicably, we split a lemon chicken piccata. Oh, that's what it, it was. was as dry as Gretchen Christine Butte. <laughs> no. It was so tough. You didn't eat your entree, did you? I, it was. I could. You had a risotto. Was, I remember you was, said it's hard. hard. <laughs> It's so not like a risotto, though. It's, it's tough to really what make a bad What is that even? It's basically risotto. just like rice and cheese. It's boiled it rice. Ri- it is supposed to be cheese and rice, and it was. I could not eat it. You said, it, like, there's crunchy down. things in, there's in it. You no longer were identifying what. It felt like a seedy hotel room where you're right. Like, you're like, I think things have happened here, it and I gross. don't. It was sticky. The floors were sticky. The whole thing was. <laughs> and it, it was cavernous. Yeah. It, rooms it upon sense. rooms. It felt like in New York. When I was in NYU years ago, and I used to go to this club called Limelight, and it yes! had like floors and rooms and different places. It felt to me like a railroad apartment. <laughs> 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 like where it's just like everything's just like a straight line of like rooms and there's like passageways to each room. And, and I think you said it best. It, it was like a house that had been redone and you could tell that. Uh, yeah, it felt like when you're house shopping and you walk in and <laughs> you're like, and I know you just did this. So you have to say, right where it's like this, they just piece this together in some way. Yeah, they yes, flipped the, it in a way. They flipped it. This used to be something else and it's not. There was five different rooms like that. Too. Yeah. Yes. And it made no sense. And it so it was no a pretty sense. dismal night. Until. Until. Oh, Until. you guys. You guys. 
<laughs> it all came together in the end, you guys. I have chills oh, because let's let's so just set it. it up. We did not see one person not from the Jax. show, and we even asked our waitress, like, "Where's Jax? Where's Kristen? Like, is she Kristen by like, the dumpster?" <laughs> and our waitress was wonderful, Lovely. girl, very nice, it just getting a degree in something. Fashion. I think I asked our waitress if Lisa Vanderpump came in once a week and <laughs> sat down with them. Like, they she's like, she's TV. never she's been. Like, in I've here. never <laughs> seen her in my yeah, life. Yeah, you were like, so is she giving you performance like, reviews she, every right. week? No, she has nothing to do with it except that. Who, Go ahead. All right. So we're just sitting there casually. And I claim that he was waitering, that he had moved to waitering. No. But they say he was still bossing. Max Vanderpump. Is that yes, the, that's his that's name. Blessing, Guys. Came and either put a, either picked up dirty dishes from <laughs> he the table was next to us or food put down running. some food. Yeah, food he, running. We think he's moved uh, up from run. busing. Okay. He is a runner, a food runner. And he was working his little tail he off. He really was. Not one of those other sweaty little no. tramps was there, but Max he working was there. his ass off. We screamed. <laughs> I grabbed Danielle. It was so hard. star sighting the likes <laughs> of, I mean. I mean, Robert... De Niro could have walked by and I'd be like, get out of the way, it's Max. <laughs> so the little table next to us, they were like, excuse us, Max, can we take a picture? And that kind of ruined our moment. So finally we went over and he said, yes, let's go out onto the porch for better lighting. I mean, how so kind sweet. and lovely. He was lovely. Now. He had manners. I liked he him. He had great I manners. He said, he, pleasure to meet us. Pleasure mm-hmm. to meet us. He wasn't sweating. He wasn't smoking like he is on Now, show. from Vanderpump, his mm-hmm. teeth were in a bit of a... <laughs> Bad play. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's a storyline right now on Vanderpump. Is it? Is it? Oh, I haven't, yeah, been, I haven't been watching. Left. Yes. And of course, it's it's a, it's, it, it is, guys. What's wrong with is. his teeth what's on the show? Story? Something's happened. And I literally watched it tonight and I'm trying to remember, did someone punch him or, and I'll, I know you guys will to tweet me right away and it's mm-hmm. horrible that I'm forgetting this, but something has happened. And, and, did, and, you, and it, did you notice anything yes, in yes, his yes. teeth? Something had happened you know or that? is he just British? <laughs> Guys, this was this was more than this British. More than- <laughs> and you know what? Bless him. And again, lovely. please, you guys, remember our do rule: we do not tag, tag anyone. Although I don't know that Max is on social anyone? media. Oh, he's of got to he be. Is. Really? I would hope so. But then why is he on the show? He's always he like was, in the background. I was expecting him to be a drug addicted. You know. Rich kid, just a standard drug addicted rich kid. I felt like he was lovely. He took our picture. He was working hard. Yeah, I thought right? so. And too. as we saw in the episode, they obviously trust him enough that if they open this new place in the shop of the in the in that sex shop, that one day Max <laughs> right. can assistant manage. Yeah, ten years, <laughs> five years, he could years possibly manage. Yes, assistant manager, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. And maybe. Yeah. That's a great segue into tonight's episode. Mm-hmm. Another snoozer. <laughs> Another snoozer, guys. I mean, things did happen. I mean, there was some Faye Resnick, and we'll get into that. And, you know, and the the the, the murder that rocked the 90210 years ago seems to keep rearing its ugly head. Yeah. Um, so that was interesting. I'm surprised the OJ trial had taken this long for it to really make its way into the show. I mean, of course, it had. we'd seen Faye and her little... Yeah, but they like snaky ways. She is a snake. She's a snake and she looks like a snake. I'm so terrified of her. Oh, she just makes me so sick. And that quietness that she was like throwing tonight. When she was, was staring at Catherine Edwards, I, I was just getting clammy. Like, say something. I know. I wasn't sure if it was, a, it was strength or weakness. I couldn't tell that silence. Wow. It was either one of, like, I, I was like, is she a pillar of strength or is she a deer in headlights? It, I couldn't put my finger on it. Yeah. Yeah. What did you make of this episode, Shira? This episode, I thought it was boring. You guys <laughs> liked it. I felt like I got no Erica Jane. I got we no. We got her at the end. What did we get, though? I want to see her 15 acres in Beverly Hills. I want to mm-hmm. see her life. I just feel like this was all, it was Faye and... Who's the other one? Catherine. I don't even know. I, well, don't I think we're trying anymore. to get to know Catherine. So they really needed to pump up right. the Catherine This was Catherine's biz. Like, entrance episode. Coming out but, party. Right. Coming out barbecue. What <laughs> Which else was, happened? Oh, the barbecue. The, I did love the way that the lady, the different ways the ladies dressed for the barbecue. Yeah, that how was it was. Great. And by love, you mean hate. By love, I mean, I felt like Yolanda. <laughs> that Yolanda? Came, I love that Yolanda came in a flip-flop. She, it, she knows who she is. You don't like that she came in a flip-flop, do you? I, I do. It's just Yolanda is like, I can't believe these women are wearing makeup. It's like, well, you know, it is a 
Even I would wear makeup to a barbecue. And again, Yolanda is not doing well. No, of course she's but not. I but I feel the like cameras she- are on. And I feel like the only women who don't wear makeup on national television are the sister wives. Yes. And I've shared those views with yes. you before, Danielle, <laughs> yeah. which is that I would love to start a collection. Those poor women. Cody has done enough to them. Get them hair and makeup. No, They're I on know. a show. TLC. You need to give them makeup. Hair and makeup is not going to help those sisters. But guys, that Las Vegas sun beating down on them. They need hair and makeup. They only get it for the testimonials. I'm on their side. Yolanda. <laughs> I think doesn't it's generous. Need, Yolanda is gorgeous. Genuinely beautiful, right? Yes. She doesn't need it. In fact, I feel like it's kind of like, it's sort of like cooler I would, you know that what? she doesn't fuck have it. all of you guys. Yeah, like, it is a I fuck say, you. Okay, right. It's like, here I am. I'm prettier than all of you. And she is, and even without she makeup. She is prettier than all of them. Even without, you're right. Right. She doesn't At the need same it. time, like, I guess it's because. You'd like to see something. It's only because she is against the background of them. And so it looks, when you see a bunch of like, Clowns. <laughs> it looks but do you like, not think she has like an under eye concealer and a spray? No, tan? I don't She's believe she has nothing to. on. There is no. I'm sorry, Sheer. I didn't that. see too much. Really? <laughs> I don't think she does. There is nothing. I Tonight believe. Tonight I saw a shower shoe and an off the shoulder <laughs> and an off the shoulder sweatshirt, I which I thought was easy and breezy. I do too. She looks easy and breezy. breezy. West Side. That's where but she's. The Malibu. thing that was funny about it was like she was like, "Oh, oh where's why aren't we all casual?" It's like you've never been casual a day in your life what's hard to accept and I think it's it's a grieving process for all of us is to just see her in such a different way because to me she was always so elegant so glamorous and she would have been she would have done it up and that's sad she always did so also to call them out on like I thought you said this it's like but you know these are these people you know with who they are shown up in a cocktail she's like she's She's the bohemian, easy breezy. Yeah, she wouldn't have shown up in a cocktail dress. She would have never dress. showed up in a co- She would never have worn what Kyle wore to that barbecue. No. Oh, well. and nor should I'm she have. I'm going kind of purple. It was a purple flowing. And Lisa Rinna right? with the Rinna. showing oh. her shoulders. Somebody else came. Oh, Erica Jane showed up. With a pink heel. Would, I like fine, that. She, I, wore a jean. she looked beautiful. That was a barbecue outfit. That the only time Erica Jane has not looked right is in her entire testimonials which seem to have been filmed in <coughs> one outfit on one day I'm gonna get to you Danielle and I disagree again I think Erica looks insane in her testimonials and I love her I couldn't love her more Danielle I like it I think it's a fun look for her oh it's fun <laughs> I'm not saying that it's her best look but I think she's just showing a different side of Sears you know like she's just kind of Showing us a different, cute, fun ponytail in the middle of the hair with a like a fun clip. Like I wouldn't wear it, but I think it's her. It's what she wants to bring us, and I like it. Okay. I noticed that Lisa Rinna brought in Angelina and Brad's rosé, their Miraval wine, which I brought to your <laughs> yes, Halloween we had party, on Shira, Halloween. and it's amazing. <laughs> and it was it's genuinely good, really good. And Lisa brought her shit thirteen ninety nine bottle oh, of that we tried the Vanderpump other day. Sangria. We tried to get just the cap off of it the other night, and it took 20 minutes. It's not easy. Um, I'd also like to talk about, you know, Eileen's trip to to Italy. It was sad. Like, I, I definitely felt for her, and I felt for her family and for her sister. It and was genuinely sad. Yeah, I got tears I, in my eyes. I did, too, and that was, that was a, a sad thing. I mean, again— Vincent was there, and he's not my favorite person. I don't person. think, does he go by Vincent? I don't know. I'm calling him that. I, Although, I like to keep him at arm's length. And I hate Vincent. to say this in front of my sister-in-law, but Vinny Jr., yes, oh, he, please. I, I, yes, I please. Did you, did you turn away? You didn't get, you didn't get to see Vinny Jr. He's Vince, He's Vin, Vincent's son ben. and, 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 and Eileen's stepson, but he he's is gorgeous. dark gorgeous? and cute. Okay, yes. Now I have to go. Yeah, he's gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> we both, Casey and I both went, ooh, like, like <laughs> old, like old horny them. women. <laughs> you had a very strong reaction. <laughs> we did. Vince Jr. Is Vince the husband? Yeah. No, is he yes. Good he was good looking. I think he was like in, in a 19, late 19, right, eight, right. 1970s kind of like bad news bears. <laughs> <laughs> Of like dirty blonde. The way. sun has gotten to Vince mm-hmm. out on the golf course, the tennis, <laughs> or tennis, <laughs> tennis court. Cor- He's a pro of some sort. I, you know, with Eileen and and again, that storyline was actually so yeah, sad. Really but sad. before, when she was packing for it, I have to say, I feel like 
I love watching the women pack and most of them manage to make it this kind of wish fulfillment, very effortless packing job. Like Heather Dubrow, you know, where she always has, you know, all her jewelry and little baggies and it's so organized and Yolanda even, even when she's sick, you know, she's just making it look so effortless. And then there's Eileen who is the definition of harried <laughs> dropping she bowls like, on the ground, <laughs> no. rushing around in oversized jeans. Like, Wah! And she's like, she's like, like it was, She's like Kathy with like steam coming out of her ears. Like, <laughs> ah! She really was because, yeah, I, we have talked a lot about packing on this show because it happens every other episode. And it is sort of like, it's almost like a massage for my brain. Like, it's like, oh, they're packing. What are, what are they wearing? And they do it so elegantly. And there's always like a, a, a housekeeper there to help them, which I can't imagine getting help packing. And so it is, it's like kind of a luxurious thing and then although I always feel like Kyle's uh, like packing is just like Portia like jumping up and down mugging (laughs) and I have to just watch Kyle do her own makeup and Portia mugging and kennel those dogs (laughs) kennel the dogs during filming yes please agree I also love the runner of the housewives you know where they pretend to call each other and invite them over oh yes As if all of them don't have it, like a camera right there. Like, you're going to get a call in five minutes, accept (laughs) or die. (laughs) It's always kind of like a Mission Impossible type of, this is your mission. (laughs) And and ever Kyle's always like, I I thought it would be nice to invite Faye because, you know, Faye comes to everything I do. It's like, Faye hasn't reared her morally corrupt little head for a few years. No, I was saying to you girls that Faye is like that fuck buddy you call when you're like, well, want to have sex. There's nobody else around. Faye Resnick. <laughs> like she's just like kind of this one they drag out when there's nothing interesting happening. And they're like, We've got nothing interesting here. Let's have Faye Resnick over. And, and you said, I mean, she's been trying to be a housewife for just so for long. Just her own sense of self. It's like if Andy hasn't hired you at this point, <laughs> it's time to go. You know what I mean? Like it's like, let's hold our head high and walk out. And yeah, you know when someone doesn't, doesn't like you, you and, and you He's stop just, reaching out to people that no longer invite you places. It's right. like, Faye, it's, have a little dignity. She does not, they don't no. want you on the show. Faye. And she's so disgusting being like, that was a very dark time for me. It's like, Faye, you wrote a book, bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what that voice Preach. was. But it was. Like, how dare she feel sorry for herself when she wrote a tell-all book. Nobody knew who she was before. She could have mourned that quietly or with other people. She could have told her story to her friends and mourned it. But she went and wrote some tell-all trashy book and then pose for playboy the book is almost one thing it's horrible but then that is just so gross she was capitalizing on every second of that whole thing like i don't feel sorry for you she's so gross we have a mutual friend i will not name name who lives in the same building with Faye. she reports she's lovely in the elevator <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure she's lovely in the- she's lovely as I mean, i'm she- sure hitler was too no. <laughs> <laughs> when Faye, when they were in the decorating store and Faye, i guess is helping kyle when Faye was holding that clipboard it's like when you give a stethoscope to a child <laughs> and you're like, you're a doctor now. Like, Faye's no decorator. No, well, only to Kyle. I feel like she, everything Kyle touches, Faye has had her hands in. Her yes, little hands. Because it's an ad in. for Faye's. What, business? Company. Yes. Does she business. have a company? I'm sh- What? I mean, there's no, what, that is what's happening. Is she's Faye Resnick Esquire? <laughs> she's decorating stuff for free. I'm a, there's no Why way. Why is Kyle so up Faye's ass? What does she have on her? That's what I think. I don't think she, I think back in the day before Kyle was anyone, Faye was weirdly someone because she was involved in this horrific murder <laughs> trial. Like it was kind of they're like, all, a, that was her A-list they're all, celeb friend. They're all the underside of Hollywood <laughs> or of worst. Beverly Hills. Like the even worst. like Kim and Kyle, they're sort of like a seedy underbelly, that Hilton stuff, like... Well, that brings me to <laughs> a seamless transition to a, one of our fans suggested, two of our fans suggested uh-huh. that I read the tome House of Hilton, mm. a tell all book unauthorized <laughs> about the Hiltons. And I think this was written before the housewives. Oh, I've only read like two chapters and I'm obsessed. Yeah. But I just will give you a little bit, a little insight into Kathy. Please do. And I don't mean Kathy Hilton. I mean a woman they refer to as Big Kathy. Oh, that's Big a Kathy terrible is name. terrifying to me. Big Kathy is Kyle, Kim, and Kathy's mom. And I will be referring to them no, as Big Kathy, wait, Little we Kathy. Confirm though that Kathy has a different dad. 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 Okay, they all have the same. Okay. Uh-huh. So Big Kathy's all there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As it turns out, Kathy Hilton was not to the manner born. 
Mm. That's the end of another chapter, but I thought it was a good <laughs> sentence. So I'm now starting a new chapter. Okay. This, and that's the end. <laughs> yeah, that made me just so happy. This is very like whatever happened to baby Jane and very gypsy. Oh, I like it already. The future Kathy Hilton was groomed for stardom that eluded her by the overbearing, determined, and very outlandish big Kathy who lived <sighs> vicariously through her daughter's ups and downs. A materialistic diva, big Kathy was obsessed with accumulating money, diamonds, fancy cars, expensive homes, and husbands to pay for it all. She was a mistress of, of manipulation who dominated and controlled little Kathy's and her sister's every professional and personal decision. Wow. Uh, Kathy is the silent figure lording over this all. She really is. She, she is on, on some level a housewife, even though she's never been seen. Yes. And this book talks about how she tried to groom little Kathy to be the star, but then quickly, like, Kathy couldn't get auditions. She was, like, super lazy. And then when Paris was born, she was, like, a little instant star, and big Kathy was finally, like, like shoved her own daughter aside and was like, Paris is basically, like, the heir to my throne. So why does Kathy not accepted, which I'm sure she's been offered, to be a housewife on the show. Has she been offered? She, ha- she ha- has to have. Maybe she she's like her sisters had it first. She has done a slew of horrific Because I think she shows, looks right? down on but her this, sisters, yes, maybe. This is like too, this is too. And she's like, I, they're over. slumming over here. Right. Who right. could look down on someone if she you're married to a man named Rick? <laughs> the name Rick. That's, Rick it's, that's where your problem is. Honestly, that's where her problems start and really? end. Rick. <laughs> Rick. What a it's Rick. Not that of to me, name. Rick is just like, what a just Rick. I alienated all your <laughs> My fans. Named Rick. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I know a lovely Rick, but he's definitely a Rick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, there's more salacious tidbits coming, but that's just where I'm at with House of Hilton right now. But okay. it's, it's putting into context a lot for me. And speaking of the Hilton sisters, R.I.P. Monty. Monty, Kim, Kim's first husband and father of her chi- children or child. Do we say it was Brooke? It's definitely Brooke, I believe, her eldest daughter. Yeah. As a light Instagram stalking session showed yeah. me. Just a casual. Yeah. Yeah. But that's. I got really sad reading all the Instagram posts and everything. Me too. But it was nice that Kyle posted something about Monty and like just to kind of, I think, show. I don't know if her and Kim are talking right now. I can't quite glean from what's. Was it though? Because I like Kathy's move of like, we don't need to put this out on Instagram. I'm sure she called her privately. I feel but I like think. Does Kim- Kathy have Instagram? Great. Yes, she does. Oh my gosh. Oh, I, I, know, I didn't know, know that. that. Oh my gosh. But I do think it's Kyle yeah, reaching out through the interwebs to it's Kim. It's the only way she can get to her. So I think wow, it was a, a sweet tribute. You know, I don't know what's going on there, but it did feel like a sweet tribute. Poor Monty. Here's Ka- Oh, wow. Kathy has a lot of followers. Yes. I bet. 178,000. Kathy, Kathy is the star. Also, I want to take three. a moment real quick to say that why would Lisa, Rena saying to... Um, to Catherine, why no children? <laughs> like, that's such a big thing to ask people. That's- Lisa Rinna is just continuing to stir the pot Lisa like she Rinna does. Lisa wants to make sure she does not get cut off the show next yeah. year. Yeah, 100%. And, but she's, strangely, whatever she's doing is making it so she is going to get cut off the show. It's, it's very, it's a, it's you're very, so right. It's a Zarin way of being. Yeah. It's very Zarin. Yes. It's not as bad as Aaron, but it's the exact same engine that's driving it. Yes. And I feel like, Lisa, I was saying this to you today. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I preferred when Housewives weren't actual actresses because I feel like I can see the artifice. It's like we're all just such so... So desperate as actresses. And I say that speaking as one. <laughs> say that looking into the mirror every yeah, morning. <laughs> looking into my Gretchen Christine Butte compact. Because honestly, I can feel the actresses watching themselves on the outside and trying to right. manipulate things and make things happen. Whereas uh-huh. the like. I think Eileen is that too. I mean, not today. Yes. Today was a real moment, but I do feel like on some, well, but on some level, I do feel like she is like, I'm going to go in this show and show people that you can be a good person right. and show my good side. And so she's trying so hard through the lens of that to like see herself as this good person and it's just making it all icky. And it's so weird to watch a franchise where when someone tries to be a good person, I find them despicable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, who are you fooling? We, there's no room for you here. You yeah. have no place here. And also because I don't, f- I feel like they're trying to be a certain way as opposed to just be you. Give us all of you. And let's see what that is. And we'll judge that that harshly. (laughs) Be you and we'll tear you down. But that's our prerogative. (laughs) Wow. You know, you reminded me of a moment. We were discussing Real Housewives of New York today. Mm -hmm. A moment (laughs) that lives 
on in, in my infamy. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> when Ramona had the dog funeral, yes, and <laughs> tossed the ass- ashes over into the Hudson, and they oh. blew back into <laughs> her face. <laughs> Oh, that was <laughs> that is that. literally the show that in a nutshell. No, yes, that's the that's dream. That's the show I'm it. looking right, for that, that I'm not finding right now. I know <laughs> not knows. enough of that. Not Such enough a dog fear moment, and then just dog ashes in your face. She was like, bah, bah, bah. I know, okay. but she and but she took it. She wrote it in stride. That's what I love. It's like I'm eating my dog. <laughs> she was like hilarious about it. You're so Sonia, I'm like my dog. <laughs> she said, and just like that, like energy of like I'm still got it, kids. Like, oh my gosh, wow, what an episode! I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't know. I mean, there was Catherine, and and we talked a little bit about Catherine and and um. Oh, I, I really liked when Lisa had this really, really strange moment with Catherine Edwards <laughs> where they were weirdly having tea and it's like enough tea. I'm just sick of watching old ladies drink tea. <laughs> but at one point they're at Lisa's house and Catherine said, well, about her husband, she's like black dog crack. And Lisa just goes, oh, OK, <laughs> really? <laughs> so weird. She is the weirdest. They do have a nice relationship, Catherine and her husband. I can't remember, but they're traveling. They're seeing the world. Donnie. Don, thank you, Casey. <laughs> Keeping all the members straight, all the members of our family straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this big old crazy family. Also, we did, you know, that new piece of knowledge about Bella and Anwar. Oh, right. that it was. Right. I'm sorry. Right. And Mohammed. And Mohammed saying that, that they did it, not what have. What do you make of that? I feel like. I don't know. I don't know. R- Vanderpump is friends with Mohammed. Oh, I'm not close enough. <laughs> <laughs> and her pump. I didn't think she was trying to stir the pot. I think she was genuinely just saying it. I think Rena is trying to stir the pot, right? Mm-hmm. And so is Kyle. And so is Kyle. I think that... In such a Kyle way, too. I don't know. What is Muhammad? Muhammad has no idea what's going on with his children, let's be honest. How many, Muhammad have, just knows how to build, like, Moroccan sauna. <laughs> and have, like, mer- women huge, dressed as mermaids at his party. <laughs> do you guys know those two huge, unfinished... <laughs> properties on Sunset Boulevard that you've probably driven by. Literally over 15 years, they've been just completely empty. Just sitting there. right next to each other. Those are his. Really? Do you you know which two I'm talking about? Why aren't they selling? I don't know. I don't know. Probably because he's selling them for so much. I don't know what it is. I don't know. But I don't I don't feel that he's got a grasp. But I mean, not that he doesn't love his kids. I don't feel like I I believe you'll I believe Yolanda with everything. I really do. I believe her. And I think that Brooks. Like the the Brooks of it all in the in the OC kind uh-huh. of made us like if we hadn't seen that we wouldn't have even thought it was conceivable that someone would just fake an illness. That's insane, true. I didn't right? even think about the You're Brooks right. factor. Like, it sort of like led us to be like, oh yeah, yeah. People, people fake diseases illness. all the time. It's a fake. And then you start looking around like, who else is? Right. <laughs> the Brooks factor. Wow, we haven't even. That's a really. It's good interesting idea. how like the franchises sort of start kind of influencing the others. Yes, I think the women took that and were like, this is going to be... But you'll want, you're, she's not just not wearing makeup and showing up looking no. like shit for nothing. Like, she must feel horrible or she's not going to... I mean, she doesn't look like shit. She looks amazing, but... Yeah. No. But right? She's you. not showing up to these things and... And it's true. It's like she has a life. She, she has sick. things to do. She has things to do. You know what I knew on. she was sick was on that plane ride home on the last episode. Like whatever she explained to all of us, like she was like she felt better and she, whatever it was. That, that, <clears throat> that scene made me be like, oh, yeah, she's really sick. It also made me be like, why is David Foster not picking her up on one of his several airplanes? That not just picking her up, every, going home with yes, her. I know. Why is he waiting like, around? I'm so happy Erica Jane's picking me up on the plane. It's, it's like, like I feel like all I see on Instagram is. Foster on the jets, but yeah, but he's just he's using them for the tenors. He's flying those tenors, <laughs> tenors all around. Really right. Well, guys, what an episode! We're now going to move on very quickly at the end here because we have such a legendary TV historian mm-hmm. among us. Yes, my sister in law Shira has introduced me to some of the greatest television <laughs> programs of our time. Now, you won't be hearing the Breaking Bads and the Mad Men's here, Mm-mm. not an Emmy winner in the bunch. <laughs> No, but these are the shows that she feels you should be watching. And I, when, when she recommends a show, you watch it and you will not be sorry. Jared, do you want to take us down a little okay, memory I'm lane? I'm going to first start out by telling you that most of these shows 
are from 2007. <laughs> okay, from great. Two, literally from 2007. But can you still find like them on do, the interweb? It's like, do you ever go back and do like a deep dive for Whitney and Bobby? Of course. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's like that. So this is what it like. So great. Okay, so some one of them I got you super into was Sons of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> this Our show is this, amazing. This 2000, 2007. <laughs> um, it was Sean Stewart. <laughs> It of was Stewart's and Hamilton's of fame. And uh-huh. Hamilton's. It was this guy named David Weintraub who. Jerry Weintraub? No, nothing to do. Uh-huh. No. Sadly, we nothing. all that. It's sadly nothing. Uh-huh. Nothing related. Guy who's, and Randy Spelling. And so Weintraub manages Spelling and Sean Stewart. And Aaron Spelling, it seems, and Candy paid for this whole show. Oh. They paid for it. Candy shows up in a few episodes. <clears throat> Oddly, Scott Disick shows up in a few episodes. Scott's as, in a few. As one of their friends from the East Coast, right? Yep. Right? And also, I do believe that that uh, Weintraub manages Disick. I don't know if he does anymore, but in 2007, when this <laughs> all went down. That's Hollywood he, is an amazing show. I watched amazing. it all in one night. Stuart was there. Tori Spelling shows up. There's wow. a lot. Kim Stewart dates Randy Spelling for an episode or two, right? And there's, there is a lot you do need to realize about Shearer's recommendations, which a lot of them cannot be found on television. <laughs> no, you have to cannot. watch them on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or... A, for instance, another one that I love that I remember telling Casey, you guys have to watch this show, Wilson Phillips. It's called St- Wilson Phillips Still Holding On. And she asked me, what network? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was interested. So I like, said, where can I find where it? Where can I find it? And my answer was, and this is true, you know that channel where they just scroll through the, the, the TV, TV guide? <laughs> Yes, the TV Guide correct. channel. Yeah, yeah. It, so the top corner was a show called Wilson Phillips. So it doesn't even get the whole screen. No, it gets the whole corner. It got one quarter of the it screen. It got my whole heart, though. I, <laughs> it did, right? It was a good show. I don't know. Did you ever? Did well, you it's ever hard to watch one? a show with, like, uh, so much, you know, flowing next to it. It's but hard it's, to focus your so eyes. It was so compelling, honestly, that you... <laughs> I, I didn't it's follow. It's like a test. Is this show, that's what they should do to every show. Is this enough to keep your eyes away from the scrolling screen of all that's well, it's on? It's like the NASDAQ, like, ticking next to it. I mean, you know, I couldn't follow you there. Bad. So that was Wilson Phillips still holding on. You were, you, you were still holding on. on. Oh, they were still holding on. They were still holding on trying to come up with another album or whatever they were doing. Oh. And that was probably, I mean, that was definitely a, year, a couple of years ago. Oh, but yeah. I, Is it still running in, like, perpetuity? I, I don't know. I don't know. But. Yeah, you will find new channels and new platforms <laughs> for viewing, okay? Okay, what, what else, else did I have? We did tons of Hollywood. Oh, you know what uh, you got me really into? Sorry to interrupt you. Is is Tamar Braxton, Braxton Family Values. Oh, I like that one. Do that I don't like watch it Not religiously. Tamar and Vince, though. Back. We're no, back that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, like I the, feel like I, w- I watched Valley. a few and there's like a sister that sometimes comes on Watch What Happens Live. Like, Well, I was on Watch What Happens Live with she, oh, her were. name is Tamar, and she refers to herself as she, she. and she was She's a big best. personality. She's the best. She is amazing. <laughs> she is amazing. I remember when you were on that with her, I was so excited, but then you like literally couldn't get a word. I, I know, but, but that was actually well, best. It was, okay. we honored her. <laughs> it was I mean, best. It was good. It was she fine. She was, yeah, she's great. They have their own show now, Tamar and Vince. But do you remember when I spent like... Seven, I weirdly accidentally spent seven hundred dollars downloading the season of, of not wait, just the season, the like the. I accidentally downloaded it several times or whatever. Like the I, catalog I of Braxton like Family Values, and it cost seven hundred dollars well, because I did it so many times. I did it on multiple <laughs> devices, and I remember having to explain to my husband. Like, what is happening? Can you get that money or that time back? I can't get it all back. And I don't you did want watch the them all. Back. Over. I don't want the time no, back. You don't those at were all. good. That was good. That you was also got good. me into Spelling Manor, which we talked about. What's last that? Week. Is that Kathy's new apartment? Oh, Kathy's. Yeah. And I also just say that one of. I mean, this is going, this is like the deepest cut of all time. But one of the Braxton sisters that was on that show did a show in like 2000, I want to say, with Ian Levan Zant. We all know. Who oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. Right? Fix that My Life. Called, no, but this was before Fix My Life. It was called, okay, what was it called? Is this before she was on Oprah? It even? was before all of it. And it was Tamar, it was Tamar, Ooh. or no, it was, who's the famous Braxton? Tony. Tony. It was Tony, one of the sisters was so jealous of Tony trying to work out through like a series of like you know when they go to wilderness adventures mm. to really work out their problems with yeah. Elon as a coach 
So that was a good one. And then what else do I have? What else? And then you have the Kourtney Kardashian one. Yes, I have this rich show kids. called Filthy oh. Rich Cattle Drive. I remember that. Remember? Like, I didn't like watch a whole episode, but I remember the ads and being like, all right. I get it. Like it was like a bunch of it was the simple life, basically. And Courtney was like a commoner amongst. Courtney was one of them. She did come off fair. She came off, you know, cold and dead inside. <laughs> like as normal. she does, as right, she just normal, but in the great, you know, just mm-hmm. she she didn't, you know. I feel like she got paid and she didn't make. Who else was on like that idiot, show? Which is kind of like her, which is great. That's, that's, what her, that's her mo. Is, that's that's what her, is by her the thing. way, there are other people on that show that made themselves look like idiots, and that's why it's worth watching. That was, yeah, Filthy Rich. Oh, and the last one is Princess of Malibu, which was <laughs> David Foster. I in remember the house that. Yeah, you do. I watched some of that do, show. How did I, I totally, find that? It was. And Alana um, Stewart, or, or okay, what was so the wife? It was the wife before. Oh, maybe uh, not. Thompson? Maybe it was yes, before, yes. Who used to date, Who right. used to ma- be married to like George Hamilton or something right. like that. And that's and Brody was, and Brody's mom. Brody, but the show was. Who was also married Brody, to Bruce Jenner. Yes, yes. Nay, Caitlin. Yeah. <laughs> that show's coming back. I am Kate season two. Oh, I'm, I'm all in. I was shocked to see that promo. That they, that, I mean, it was boring, right? I know. <laughs> I feel. Like, I want to see it again, but the first season. I was, was hoping for so much more. Right. Anyway, okay. So Princess Malibu was a pre Yolanda David Foster with Brody and his best friend, who was Spencer Pratt. I remember oh, that. Wow. Yes. Right in around in a golf, golf cart. Yes. A golf cart riding the property. Yes. And David was like, stop trashing my Yeah, house. and the mom was just like, oh, just let them be boys, right? right, right? right. right. Where do I find this? Is this on YouTube as well? <clears throat> I really. Okay, I, I watched that like that. as it was running, like prime time. TV. <laughs> <laughs> this is what like wow. pre hills. Okay, and then I do have to one last one okay. that I have been like feverishly texting everyone I know to watch, and you guys are all kind. Of, Deanna's saying no, to everybody. Okay. I've texted Breaking Bonaducci. <laughs> no, <laughs> what? I'm telling you, it is. Let me just let me put this out there. Maloof, Adrian Maloof, okay. shows up on there without any credits, nothing under her. You see How her classy. Face, there's nothing nothing <laughs> she's just, but I'm saying this was like before she, whatever, she, she shows up as Gretchen, the wife's best friend. She's in the show. And I mean, it's, it's absolutely insane. It's insane. Okay, it's, it's sort called of Breaking like, Bonaduce. About Danny Bonaduce. Like, if I could give you one off this list, yeah. and I've told so many people, and nobody will listen to me. Is Breaking this Bonaduce. Bonaduce. Breaking Bonaduce. Wow, and for you to pick one, this that's an embarrassment one. of riches. This is the one, because this guy, you know, I feel like there's a difference between the people who get, who like have money and go on reality TV and the people that like need money and are on reality. You know, that's like a very of, important it's distinction. It's really a hunger and a desperation that you right. can taste, feel, and smell. <laughs> <laughs> like to do it. Wow, Shira, thank you thank for that you, important Shira. roundup. And she's, as usual, out in the field doing her best <laughs> yeah. to, to get through all these shows and reporting back. Oh, on we appreciate it. Thank you so much to our guest, Shira Cass. Thank you, guys. Yes, Shira. Weiss, Thanks excuse me, me Shira dog. Weiss. And to, I, we haven't ever given a shout out to Karen Hassinger, yes, who is our intrepid assistant in the field, helping us, and yes. also avid housewives watcher. Yes, she's a lover of the housewives, and we love her. Yeah, we do. All right, well, Danielle and I are signing off, and I might treat myself to another prenatal. And I minute. might put on some more of this lip gloss and get my lips drier. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for listening, and send us your thoughts. Bye. Bye. Hey everybody, it's Paul Shear. What? I have a podcast with June Diane Raphael and Jason Manzukas. This kid's story is bonkers. Well, we watch the worst movies ever made. It's oh, baffling. No. And it could not have gotten it more wrong. And then we try to figure out how did this get made? I felt sick. I felt really <laughs> what upset. Dude? What Boom. is happening? <laughs> Boom! Now that what exactly is a Street Fighter? <laughs> Listen to How Did This Get Made on Earwolf or your favorite podcast app. We would love it if you did. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive produced by Scott Ackerman, Adam Sachs, and Chris Bannon. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. Earwolf.